Now on to our big question of the day. Should pro cycling be doing more to assure fans that doping is a thing of the past? So Jonas Vingegaard amazed fans with an amazing TT performance, stage 16 of the Tour de France recently. He beat Pogaccia by 1 minute 38 seconds, which is huge. Many hailed it as a testament to Vingegaard's incredible ability and advancements in tech and nutrition. However, there was also a lot of uh, insinuation and accusation of doping, as there often is when someone performs very well in the sport of cycling. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a very big, very long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's and true. Fortunately, we have unlimited amounts of time. Unlimited. <laughs> This, <sighs> you first. Um, I think that in many cases, there is examples of athletes that are exceptional. Mm -hmm. And there is every possibility that he is exceptional. And there are a very small proportion of people that are exceptional. Mm -hmm even beyond the other exceptional people. Um, so I don't think it says he is doping. Um, but I don't know. You know, it's like bodybuilders. Do they use gear? Obviously. Un unofficially. No. No. <laughs> no, no, they do. No. Officially, yes. Because they have natural competitions and non-natural. Yeah. They do, but then do they think there's people sneaking into the natural? Well, of course. Who are, <laughs> Obviously. What's the point of it then? They might as well just do the non-natural. I, I, I do think it's possible for people to be unbelievably exceptional. Like like even when like Wout van Aert came through, it was just like, wait there, he is like very good. Oh, it's the same team though, isn't it? <laughs> so there's been commentary in the world of cycling from both sides here. Um, comedian and cycling fan David O. Doherty tweeted... Stopped watching the tour after the time trial, the mega performance followed by all the usual VO2 max better nutrition ch chat is just so ball crushingly familiar. It's Indiran, Pantani, it's Reese, it's Armstrong and Contador all over again. It's so many people, maybe it's just the toxic legacy and this goldfish does keep coming back to it, but it all feels so flat. Meanwhile, former Team Sky sprinter Greg Henderson, I think he listens to his podcast, my Twitter feed looks like it did back in the late 2000s. Armchair experts everywhere wouldn't have a clue about the tech that's, that has evolved in cycling. French newspaper L'Equipe also ran a front page story on Vingegaard's TT performance with the headline, Out of This World. The same headline that they used when talking about Lance Armstrong in 1999. And many think that's a, a nod to that. That is quite funny. That is quite, yeah, quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> So, Francis, what did uh, Jumbo Visma say about it? <laughs> Jumbo Visma responded to accusations. Uh, the boss of Jumbo Visma, Richard Pluge, 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 he claimed his team's what? victory happened because other riders were allegedly drinking large beers on their rest day. I find that very hard to believe. No, I think the, the victory, I mean, I don't want to get too much into the stats of this stuff, but like the guy rode, the, the numbers he produced were bonkers. Who? Vingegaard right 7.6 watts per kilo for like 13 minutes and that was at the end like the TT was longer than that so he's riding over 6 watts per kilo for ages and then at the end like then there was a climb that he just it's numbers that are astronomically big so that's why he performed well <laughs> he put more power out than everybody else mm -hmm. uh, Vingegaard responded to doping claims saying I think it's important to focus on it it's been going on for many years it's not part of it anymore. Thankfully, I can understand people on social media are critical, but I'm not on drugs. I don't take anything illegal. Does that mean you don't take anything at all? Or does it mean you don't take anything legal? Well, it means he doesn't take anything legal. You know, like, he'll probably have protein shakes. Caffeine, we paracetamols. There'll be lots of stuff that is super highly processed that's not natural that will give you an advantage. You know, like uh, nitrates and beetroot juice. Sure. Like, you know, it, it's it's in a quantity that is not natural, mm -hmm. but it is an illegal substance. They're always going to do the absolute most legal stuff they can do, and they're going to try and manipulate the rules as much are, as possible. Are they? All professional athletes will, because yeah. you, you, you do what you do within the rules. So there, you're talking, to play devil's advocate, 
here, and it, this is p potentially controversial, but weird research chemicals which are not yet banned, but exactly. have possibly very performance-enhancing effects, they will be doing that, you think? Well, well, perhaps, yes, but it might not be that weird. It might just be a new process. Plus, I think that significance with the new breed, which mm -hmm. is Bogatcha and Vingegaard, is they have very, like, they're young. They have clearly been groomed since they were kids, like kids' kids, yeah. because the sport now has money. Whereas if you look at like football, you know, like like when I was young, you've got people like Wayne Rooney coming through. And Talent like, scouts, and they're looking for like a seven-year-old right, uh, player. Because there was already money there. Yeah, so you yeah, could yeah. have a 16-year-old that was like the best football player in the world, mm -hmm. whether you think he was or not. You know, mm -hmm. he, he was making his debut and scoring goals in the Premier League at 16 years old. And that's because there was money there for him to start playing football when he was like two years old. Mm -hmm. The same thing can be said with cycling now. There's been a lot of money in cycling now for, a, what, 10, 20 years? Well, probably 10 years. So someone that's in their 20s or early 20s was probably from a household where they were into bikes anyway and was riding at a young age, <clears throat> excuse me, was showing an interest in it. And it was like, well, there's there's money in this. So, you know, let's see how, how good this person can be. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I've definitely spoken to you about this theory of like 10,000 hours, like... No one is exceptional unless they put the graft in. Yeah. There's 10,000 hours, the idea of 10,000 hours to be uh, an expert at any given thing. Someone like Vingegaard and Pogacar were probably training at a professional level at an age that is probably unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So by the time they get to their peak athletic performance, which is going to be like early, mid-20s, maybe late 20s, they've already got like so much in the bank. That all these hours, all these reps. Well, exactly, yeah. There's, there's, stuff. They've built such a, a base that when they do apply the, the new technologies, the, you know, the bike technologies, the kit technologies, the nutrition technologies, go into a team that has uh, 50 million pounds or whatever their budget is, to make sure that they have the best nutrition and the best this and the best that, then that just gets you know magnified even more. Mm -hmm. Purely based on numbers, more people are uh, competing in cycling than ever before. Yeah. There's more humans in the world, right? <laughs> For now. Uh, and the that means there's going to be more chance of finding someone who has an FTP of six and a half watts per kilo, yeah. seven watts per kilo. And it potentially is an anomaly. Yeah, yeah, true. And that, that does happen. Mm -hmm. Like what was that swimmer that was like bonkers? What Michael Phelps was he? Was he a dope? they? How no? Well, I, well <laughs> maybe they, the swimmers. So the the biological advantage that a lot of swimmers have is Marfan syndrome. Oh, cool. Apparently, which is uh, a, a arm span longer than their height. Height here. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot more. I mean, at least in cycling, there's a bit more variation in what you can can be good at. Like most people can start cycling, and they're going to be like, oh yeah, fairly good at competing in either track. Or as you can do, be a sprinter or a climber, or whatever. In swimming, it's like unless you've got well long arms, don't bother. You're not going to be. Don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> well, webbed, webbed toes. There's some people. Well, yeah, there's probably some people who are more buoyant do you in think, the world. Do you think it's cheating in swimming to get skin grafts in between your fingers and toes? I bet oh, toes. some people have done it, but yes, it's probably banned as well. Why? That shouldn't be banned. It's like mutilation. Do you think a cyclist could get an implant of a third lung? Probably not. blood. That probably. is banned. It would probably be. There's probably complications. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, where would you draw the line? Oh, you talked about d doing everything within the legal realms. Sorry, Marco. Doing anything within the legal... <laughs> that's going to sound very <laughs> Sorry, Marco. To, to, to those called... listening. <laughs> <laughs> I just touched the plant that's in between us. It's called Marco Plantani. Um, he's listening. He's come to life because we're talking about... This is the touchy subject, really, isn't it? Where do you draw the line? If you think athletes from all sports, and correct me if I'm yeah, words well, yeah. in your mouth here, you think, you think athletes in most sports are would be silly to not do everything within their power to legally be faster? There's a rule book. There is literally a rule book. Yeah, and it in, says in this is allowed, sports. this is not. Yeah, so, so you're going to do everything that science says. Mm -hmm. the, the minimum you're going to do is everything that science says makes you better that is within the rules. But some people disagree. So uh, I raced the Tour Series. It's pro teams, you know, I wasn't a pro, but there were pro teams there. And some riders there would take caffeine pills 
Some would take painkillers, paracetamol. Some would take even stronger painkillers when they were allowed, tramadol. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw? And, and, and uh, the riders there who were pros, a lot of them, despite it being their job and their, their, you know, their careers on the line, would draw the line somewhere in the middle of there and just be like, no, I don't want to do that. You know, they were, a lot of people have caffeine gels. That's like really common. That's a performance enhancing substance, which everyone accepts is like, cool, yeah, coffee. Paracetamol, people go, some people go, and some people go, yeah, why not? What does the rule book say? Yeah, paracetamol is fine and tramadol was fine. There you go. So it's fine. Of course it is, yeah. Yeah. But then later it was banned because it was... Then it's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just saying, do everything. You, 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 by your logic, I could just go to a, a doctor or a chemist. I'll make Joe. Oh, I wouldn't trust him to make me some don't drugs. Talk, don't talk about Joe. He would get us into trouble. He would get into trouble. Don't use his full name. If I suddenly get really fast on the right. <laughs> you can go to a chemist, get them to make you something which is not on the banned substance list, potentially. If you had a million pounds to do it, which teams do, and then you could be faster than everyone else and give your riders a new drug. I would hazard a guess and if that, it's, the, it, that the product already exists. If yes. it has performance benefits, it will exist. It'll just be whether it's on the banned list or not. We're going to have a guest on there. Because um, from my understanding, there is a, a, a huge array of like chemical formulas that will, you will still have, they all have very similar effects. A lot of drugs have similar effects, but they have a different chemical formula. The same thing can be applied for performance enhancing drugs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Unlimitedly, potentially. Like, I, like, I, I, we need to speak to someone, an expert. Like, at a point, EPO wouldn't have been a banned substance. Yeah. Like, at a point, heroin and cocaine wasn't a banned substance. Yes, exactly. And they used to drink champagne mid mid stage because they were thirsty. Mm -hmm. Like, well, actually, they probably still. I would imagine booze isn't banned, but they do the little on the Champs Elysees at the end. Yeah, yeah little, not banned. Um, but you know they used to literally use like cocaine and like whiz and stuff like that yeah and it wasn't banned that was just part of the band it was like I'm tired I'm gonna have to stay awake yeah arguably not that good for you either so it's probably a good thing it was banned yeah so <laughs> pro cycling has a bad reputation yeah which is why people are instantly defaulting to people doping which doesn't happen in other sports it doesn't no, no. Well, you can so the same, start. same. Like, all right. Uh, so, for example, if a Russian gymnast all of a sudden <laughs> was twenty percent better than everyone else, people would go doping definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. if they weren't. But in football, if a young player collapses on the pitch, the media doesn't go EPO. They're on drugs. Their blood got so thick they collapsed. Mm. Whereas that is literally what happens in pro football. Is it? Yeah. But not EPO. EPO. Uh, unofficially, uh, speculation. Speculation. From Sorry, Marco. <laughs> I'll put you, Marco. <laughs> it's just... Poor guy. Marco's clearly trying to make his point. Mm. My point is, it doesn't get blown up in the media in the same way. And especially by football fans. They just seem to watch and enjoy. Whereas cycling fans, there's like this big 50-50 split of just like, oh, they're doping, oh, they're not doping. I, Most people still watch it and enjoy it, I hope. It would probably be because football is, uh, obviously foot, football requires very good fitness, mm -hmm. but it is a skill sport. It's the sport is based on skill. Cycling is based on cardiovascular ability. In terms of your performance, yes, there's skill involved. You've got to be able to ride a bike. You can't no, no, no. My, my sigh there was not that. My sigh was yes, but football is at such a much higher level with the fitness does come into it. Of they are it running. They are like yeah, yeah. They are doing it does. It, it, but it's just as important as the skill side. A stuff. normal person can have the fitness of a professional football player. A normal person cannot have the fitness. Of I don't know. I, I disagree cyclist. with you. I disagree with you. A normal person, a normal fit person would not be as fit as, like, the, the pro football players. I don't know, I disagree. Nah. Like, like some of the, the amateur runners that I used to run with that used to, like, turn me inside out, that are, that are nowhere near 
like being professional runners, mm -hmm. but are just like unbelievable humans. Like they would run circles around a football player and they're just a normal what, person. Just a day job. Or run, well, doing, playing a the, football game. Nah, see, I disagree. I reckon there, so there will be like lactate recovery and there, so they like hard bursts and then they recover and they can just run and they, there's so much money involved that the problem will be if, if there is a problem in cycling, which there is a few people, like there are people being caught, it will be worse in a sport where there's more money involved. I, I, I. So uh, you're saying if there is illegal doping stuff happening in cycling, then more of it is happening in a bigger sport. Yes. Right. Purely because of money. I think. Possibly. Purely because of money. The stakes are higher. There's more incentive. I actually commented earlier. Um, and there is definitely some doping happening in cycling. I've spoken to a few pros. They're like, oh, yeah, we know the guys who are doing that. It's the like giveaway stuff. You look at some retired pros and they have gaps in their teeth, receding hairline, like the jaw. They 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 look like they've been taking either growth hormone, testosterone. That you know they look like bodybuilders, but skinny. I don't think you can say they've definitely been taking it. No, you you can't. Again, it's speculation. It is speculation. Yep. Maybe they just have more growth hormones. I think in our very first podcast, I actually commented on how it feels like cycling has finally moved away from the space where everything feels like there's doping. Mm -hmm. And then seven podcasts later, bam, doping, yeah. straight back in. Mm. It's very disappointing. Mm. From one performance. So what could be done? What should be done? so that we haven't got people watching the sport of cycling, which is beautiful to watch, mm -hmm. and going like, yeah, but these people, they're, they're doing this and they're doing that. Sure, surely something can be done so that you can enjoy the sport knowing that everyone's on the same even playing field, playing by the rules. I enjoy it anyway. Yeah, but a lot of people go, well, it's just open, I'm not interested, like Doherty. How many people, though? At least one. I have. I can factually say one. I can speculate forty-nine million others. Okay. I still enjoy it, and there's enough people to continue to enjoy it that will continue to enjoy it. What was your favourite stage at the tour? Uh, so the last one. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> one of my twins doing really well, getting on the podium. Yeah. Yeah. The Yates brothers. How many twins have you got? I look, I look strangely like the Yates brothers, and we have very close birthdays as well. Yeah. So we might actually secretly be twins, like tri triplets. Doesn't, you definitely wouldn't be twins and triplets if your birthdays are different days. Then you're also not triplets. No, or probably not. <laughs> Speculation. <laughs> do you think testing? Do you think there should be more testing, or do you think the testing should be made available to us? Well, they got for for people who might not be that into cycling there and they might not have heard about it there's a thing called the biological passport which is instead of just random drug testing where you pee in a pot at the end of a race all professional riders have to have regular testing done and a blood passport made so you can see if there's any big di like discrepancies or anomalies throughout the year that has i think that satisfied a lot of fans and made people think oh at least this is all being done and it's going to be a lot harder to cheat. Whereas previously, the pee in a pot test is not very accurate and not very... Like they don't, they're, they're either testing for one thing and then they, they, they the wrong thing and the riders taking something else and a lot of it would just slip through the cracks. I remember reading an article years ago. Uh, I wish I could pull it up again. I had a little look, but I couldn't. Um, about the, the chances of being caught by one of those tests. And it was the pee in a pot. The pee in a pot, yeah, just like a standard doping test, and it was just astronomically low, like less than one percent. No, really? Yeah, it was just ridiculous. Even if you were doping, because it was just so, it was they. Someone had done some maths in this article. I really will try and find it. If I find it, I'll put it in the description down below. And it was just like it's basically uh, it's a it's a it was more. The conclusion was it was more of a deterrent, like the fear of it. Uh, so that you know, you or someone might test me and catch me rather than actually being caught by it. See, I, th I think that feels like the people testing don't actually care. And that as long, long as the sport, as long as the sport's exciting and people are not dying, yeah, then yeah, yeah. 
you know, so. keep the, the, the better they perform, the more exciting the sport is. Mm. Do you think they should be more transparent with testing data? Should we be able to see this information? I think, I mean, if I was a world tour pro, I feel like I could prove if I was clean or not and just release more data or like pay for my own. I guess you can't expect people to do that because all riders are like mega rich, are they? But you... Does releasing data make prove sense? anything? No. Because there's always going to be exceptional performances. That's yep. the whole point of it, isn't it? You'll build, yeah. like, if if he peaked, if, if Vindegaard peaked in that TT, mm. well, what a perfect time to yeah. do it. Like, that is... That is well, there's also, like, what, are, what how are we going to interpret data from from some blood testing badly? Yeah, with a lot of Unless you will, or, like, someone who is an expert. And then you're taking it secondhand from the expert, who in the past have... There's been experts involved in cycling who have lied about stuff. Mm. So it's really, it's a, just a bit of a minefield, isn't it? I think we should ask our mate Will, who is the nutritionist for EF, whatever they're called, yeah, and say uh, EF doping, and I'm sure he'll tell us whether, whether they're not. <laughs> they're probably saying no. Yeah.